We have a really exciting talk today with Lynn Campbell from Lynn Campbell Productions, and she is a Los Angeles producer as well as a creative coach. So I'm going to um, do a quick intro of her and then invite her on so she can introduce herself and we can get started with today. Um, so as the day goes on, or as the day, I keep saying day, it's not going to be a day, you guys, okay? <laughs> We're not like committed to that much time. Um, as the time goes by, please ask your questions. I might not be able to get to them right away, but I'll try and skim through them before. Keep in mind that there is a bit of delay between when you post a question and when um, I see it on my end. So <clears throat> again, oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Manashi. Um, I'm the host of the Commercial Photography Roadmap Group, and um, I am a folk photo consultant. I help photographers see their work when they have a hard time because they're so in it. Um, I build portfolios for photo uh, commercial photographers, uh, websites, and print portfolios. So I am going to give you an introduction of Lynn. One second while I do this. Okay. Lynn is a freelance photo producer has, who has been working in the role of a product producer for 15 years and has worked in commercial photography doing most jobs one can do for a total of 25 years. She is also starting to offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for creatives, helping guide people through to their full and best expression while staying in their integrity and joy. Um, I am going to provide the link for both this is, um, I don't know if you can see that. That is um, uh, Lynn's Talk It Out LA, um, uh, her coaching business, and then also her, do, 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 sorry guys. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, I can't add more than one thing. Oh, okay, I see, I have to do it separately. Um, okay, so, and then this is her um, her production company. Okay, I'm going to invite Lynn on. Make sure you tell me who you are and where you're turning, tuning in from as we go. Okay, one second. I have to do a few things before I can make the magic happen. And I'll do that. And then, wait, where is she? There, she's coming. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. There we go. Wait. Am I no. here? You're here. No, wait. Now we want to do this. Sorry, guys. Technology. No, that's not what we want to do. We want to do that. <laughs> okay. Hi, Lynn. So glad Hi. to have you here today. Hi, I'm glad to be here. So Hi, there might be a bit of Oh yeah. Um, so make sure that um, you tell Lynn who you are, where you're tuning in from. And oh, I forgot to mention as well, you guys, that I have a, um, I've created based on today's topic, a, um, a temp, uh, it's like a cheat sheet for asking the right questions to your clients when you're building out an estimate. And we're going to be talking all about estimates right now. Um, not just estimates, but conscious estimate estimating and Lynn, because of her experience, like because of your experience, Lynn, with not only production, but also your, you've done a lot of, um, coaching to do with money and mindset and stuff like that. So I would love to hear from you about, first of all, how did you get into production? Well, um, I, like I said, I've been in photography for 25 years. I used to be a photographer. I studied fine art photography and that was my thing, but I've been in commercial photography for 25 years. I've been a studio manager, a photo assistant, again, a shooter. Um, I've done assisting for wardrobe, assisting for props, drove trucks, you know, let's just whatever, you know? Yeah. So, um, and then I had my friends, my photographer friends basically said to me, uh, do you want to produce? And I said, yes, because, you know, I just needed to make more money and, I, and everybody wanted me to do it. So I said, yeah. So that's how I got into production, but basically doing everything from the bottom up. So knowing everybody's job, knowing what things cost, knowing how to execute on a timeline. Uh, so it's been very helpful. Yeah. And and then now tell me a little bit more about the, I mean, I know a bit about it, but tell um, the rest of the group about your creative coaching and how that kind of ties into your experience with production. Well, um, 
I've been a coach, a money coach, and then sort of just a healer type coach for about four years. Um, not hands on or anything. It's still just very much talking, but I decided to do, do every, do that based on the creatives because I am one. I know how I speak your language. We can go from zero to 100, the drop of a hat. Cause I know what you're talking about. So the, the, the coaching is basically everything from how do I handle my jobs? How do I do this? Um, but finding yourself in it, making sure that you are in your right place, making decisions correctly for yourself. And then we can look at bigger picture things, too, and talk about our belief systems and emotional um, blocks or we don't even want to see them as blocks. But um, how to expand on who you are, how to express yourself and how to be present in your life and mm -hmm. to move forward with confidence and do everything in your life from your place of power. So. I have to remember to look at the camera. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. It's it's um it's okay. I think they understand that we're looking at each other really like her down here. <laughs> um yeah, and that is so um I think that is so cool because you're really um helping photographers and cr other creatives on a deeper level when it comes to um you know estimating is one thing but doing it from a place of under, of of like a personal like how it is um if we, if we have our own blocks or anything like that around money. Yes, because we approach money and money related situations from our belief systems. So um, it's always best to sort of back yourself out of that. Yeah. And just look at what's in front of you and realize that um, all the negotiables in front of you have to do with your time, have mm -hmm. to do with who you know, how you're going to execute the job, especially when we're talking about, Oh, modern day situations where everybody's looking to do things for a little cheaper. And also like to say it fairly, there's so many, um, there's so many places to place advertising, you know, so the advertising dollars are not chunked into a few areas anymore. There's mm -hmm. just, so, you know, to be fair to the advertising agencies and the advertising business, it's because there's so many more opportunities for placement that that um, estimates can be trickier. So. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into that a little bit. Um, I, I have a few questions, so I might kind of refer to my sheet because um, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. And please, whoever is watching here, um, ask your questions as well so that we can address those as we go along or at the end. Um, OK, so. Um, so. Okay, first of all, let's start from the beginning. Tell us what, a, well, actually, no, let's not start from the beginning. Let's talk about, um, like, a lot of photographers that I speak to and that I hear, like, online, um, asking, quite, like, saying that they got a job, they got a call for a job, and um, it's, and the client doesn't have, provide a lot of details about what the shoot is going to be. And um, they want to keep costs down. So they take on a lot of the, the, the producers ex, um, jobs, um, like with basically doing it for free. So mm. what, would you, um, what would you say to this? How can they educate their clients on the value of good production? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to laugh out loud, but uh, <laughs> well, that's a tricky little situation. Educate your client on a, the value of production. It depends on how educated they are already. Yeah. Um, and it depends on where you can speak from. I mean, it's anytime you're, I would say anytime your um, client is unsure, it's an opportunity to create a really uh, deep relationship with them by sitting and talking with them and um, basically interviewing them about their shoot. Um, and if they take your S you know, estimate guideline mm -hmm. and sort of, you know, you want, you would want to chuck it down, but you can use it as a template of like what questions to ask. And I wouldn't ask them in a strictly production way. You want to ask them as if you're know, working at an ad agency, really, if you just want to sort of imagine yourself in that position and say, you know, when somebody says, I don't know what I want to do and I want to keep costs down, you're just like, 
cool, you know, that's like, that's not an easy thing. So mm -hmm. if you want to say what, you know, what were your parameters? How many, how many models, like, what are you thinking of is, or what products or what yeah. outfits do you have to shoot? Or, you know, it depends on what we're talking about. Just, you know, ask them, ask them maybe their placement, ask them about their, their needs or, or what they hit, you know, what their stack of to do's are, they must have some idea, right? Yeah. And then you can start building um, and ideas from there because different ideas have different cost points, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, cost different things. So, but also too, when it comes to, you also mentioned almost a different topic of working for free and doing a producer's job. So again, um, I can't say that's not the photographer's job, but doing it for free is not um, always good. So I think the way to approach that, I think you and I did speak about this briefly, is, you know, separating out, especially. <laughs> I, I do I do think it's best the way you put your estimate together, your es sample estimate together of all the different photographers lines. Mm -hmm. so that they can see the mm -hmm. time you're putting in as the photographer and to always have your usage separate um, just because if usage changes down the line or if they're looking ways to cut costs, you want to be able to be flexible without screwing yourself, to be blunt. So um, the other part of that is to then take that down into the production line items and you doesn't matter who's doing it. You can either do coordinator if, you know, sometimes having a producer doesn't make sense to people if you're functioning, wanting to do a lower cost job. So mm -hmm. just, you know, think about the psychology of everything you're putting down. Yeah. I don't know if everybody's able to make sense out of that, but think about that psychology. Maybe just put in, if somebody's like, I really want to keep costs down, then do coordinator. And whether that's you or not, put in the, the time and put in the time, put in the amount of days. Um, and you might want to think about it um, in terms of what you would be paying somebody else so that you're not, you take it out of your personal zone, right? Yeah. That's the biggest yeah. trick, taking every, making it, taking that, not making it personal, not making it a personal choice, not making it about what you can get done. Right. Make it about what's logical, what makes sense to the job and yeah, pay, and pay everybody for it. Sorry. Totally. And I think that's a great point because, uh, you know, as you said before, making sure to ask those right questions because as a lot of people do kind of know what they want, and it's just yes. a matter of of getting it out of them and and kind of, um, you know, asking those questions so that, you know, um, OK, well, that you want models. So that means that you're going to need a casting. You're, you want, yes. you know, you're 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 going to need a producer. Oh, well, I thought you were doing the production. Um, and then that's the point where you can start that dialogue, I feel. Yes, yes, yes. And if it's client direct. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have any creative in between you and the client, uh, I would prefer to take on the production and get an advance and all that stuff because you will get into some tricky, tricky business having a client put some stuff down. But like, you know, there are other situations. There are honestly other situations where A, you'll be accessing their buildings be, you'll be accessing their people. Mm -hmm. So you want to work in tandem with them and mm -hmm. you don't really take on the production because you are, you're taking on portions of it. Yeah. You want to ask about food. You want to, you want to be the heavy guider, yeah. but you won't be the executor for many things. Right. So, um, every situation can be built custom built. Yeah. I and feel. And that's where, that's where negotiation, that's where your negotiables come into view. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that, um, what you were saying about, um, earlier about, um, uh, bringing the, um, you know, putting the line item in, even if yes. you're going to be doing it, because if they suddenly, if the, if the, like you said, if it grows all of a sudden and you are like, uh, I need a producer, like this is not. 
this is out of my comfort zone, first of all. And second of all, that it's actually part of your, your it's time. And if you don't put it in there, they don't know, right? Yes. Um, and they just come to kind of assume that that's part of the industry standard. Um, just right. also backing up to what you said, um, uh, okay. Oh, uh, it's leaving, it's leaving me. <laughs> um, customizing and negotiables, customizing everything and what your negotiables are. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. Expand on that a little bit. So, well, let me ask you one more question. First of all, let's back up and talk about what a producer actually does um, for a job. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a lot. But let's, I know it's a lot. You don't have to go through every single detail, Good. but um, like the whole the whole idea. How do they bring a shoot together um, for photographers? Um, you start at estimating. Um, the way my world works is when I'm, you know, um, there are producers that are called are called directly from the ad agency. Um, I have worked in that way before. Um, but you still have to talk to your photographer to build an estimate because every photographer does their jobs differently and need different tools, trucking, um, mm -hmm. footprint for how they work. Um, so it starts there, starts with estimating, starts with having long, not long. I mean, if you know what you're doing, they're not long. So um, you just get the scope of the job, put the numbers together, come back <laughs> mm -hmm. after the cost consultants come in. No. That doesn't always happen. But anyway, um, basically, I do a lot of the coordination. Um, I don't, um, you know, I, get, I use casting directors. I, I used to do my own castings an age ago. No longer do that. It's not cost effective or time effective for me. Um, those people have great relationships, especially in Los Angeles, you know, you want those uh, casting directors relationships if you ask me, but at the other, you know, the other end of the spectrum, if sometimes you just need to do, cause you did bring this up earlier. Sometimes you just need to do a, a, just a lower scale casting or street mm -hmm. casting or something like that. Photographers are very able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, LA casting, just post something or you can just do an online thing and then have people send in videos or photos later so you can get to know them and see them beyond their normal posted photos so you can get their vibe. That's doable. Mm -hmm. um, it takes time, but you do it. Um, but the cost is much, much less. So what else does a producer do? We, we get everything together. We get so casting, location, scouting, um, get all of our trucking schedule. Oh God, of course, scheduling, <laughs> but that's, that's part of, but that's also, you know what, to be honest, that's part of your estimating, uh, the, at least the big chunky bulks. You have to know your parameters, your days, your prep days, your, are you going, do you need a pre-light? Do you need to, do you, do you need to do a tech scout? Mm -hmm. Um, who needs to be on that tech scout? Does art department, props need to be on that tech scout. Would it make any sense mm -hmm. if they're not on that tech scout? You better have your eyes on and you better know what you're doing because you need to know how wide are the doors? <laughs> where is the loading zone where, you know, because on that day you could screw yourself if you can't get <laughs> what you need where you want it. So, yeah. um, it's hard for me to go into basically we do we do all of the coordinating. I have done a lot of the creative um, ideating, not ideating, but trying. I'm a really good creative negotiator when it comes to um, chunking things down when people need to bring budgets down right. or when we need to chunk something up because they want to add B-roll, et cetera. Now, that's always a usage issue. That is always a talent issue. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I could go on forever. This is a bad yeah. question for me. So <laughs> not bad, not bad, but I will just soak up the whole time no. babbling about the ins and outs and the details. But I think one of the big <laughs> points, I think one of the big things is that um, it is for photographers to realize that these production, um, these production tasks that you're talking about, as well as all of the other components of production really should not be done by a photographer because then their creative energy is being taken away from what they're being hired to do. They're being hired to show up and bring their creative 
creative um, juices and everything to the table. If they're worrying about whether there's layout board on the floor, then they're not doing what their job is. So um, I yep. think like I think that understanding what you do and also understanding um, understanding that 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 those line items that are in an estimate are there to protect the photographer. That would be yes. a good thing to touch on a little bit. Do you have any thoughts on that? Like how actually, you know what? I had a question about um, like um, like a lot of photographers think like when you're bidding on a job, when you're first yeah. presenting, a lot of photographers, especially when they haven't bid on a lot of jobs, they feel like they need to come in low. And can you right. talk about the dangers of underbidding on a job? Um, the dangers of underbidding on a job are twofold. Fee-wise, obvious. Um, that's just, you're going to feel it. Um, then... Um, Production wise, you're going to feel that too. It's going to uh, coming in under in a job, I guess it's going to fall on you. Mm -hmm. um, I personally won't. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, <laughs> and it falls on me. I do take things very personally. I take every job I do. I, I, um, I, every job I do has a lot of weight and it has to be. And there are points where I have to say, you know, I can't and won't do it for that. I just mm -hmm. won't subject myself to a production of that space or I'll say, well, maybe we can try to put a coordinator on or, or whatever, but it's mm -hmm. still a lot of ish. It's still a lot of work for me to deal with um, routing of all the money and dealing with all that stuff and all the insurance and all that stuff. But um, the dangers of coming in under budget is either, and it's not, you know, when I see the budget, I also see um, execution. So mm -hmm. you're not going to be delivering a what you said either in the amount of images, yeah, uh, the amount of setups. Um, yeah. um, it it can it can ruin everything. So clarity and asking all the questions, mm -hmm. or asking for help if you don't know the questions to ask are extremely important, especially when you're new. Just mm -hmm. call somebody and ask because you will get yourself in a heap of trouble. You'll have a horrible day and you'll, you'll, it'll, you'll feel so bad. But, um, and, and more than that, if you're not delivering, mm -hmm. um, on what everybody thought you were going to deliver on, that's a huge issue. Mm -hmm. But I will say this, um, if you find yourself in that situation, all is not lost, but you have to keep your head on mm -hmm. and you have to, it is your responsibility to control the situation, to control right. the shoot, to get what you're, know what you're getting and um, know what you're not getting. Know when mm -hmm. to slow down, know when to relight, know when to talk to the other person on set. Who's there? Is there, who's the creative director there? Who's the other person response, you know, other cl client agency, art director, whoever it is, stop and have a conversation. Hey, not sure I got this shot. Um, do I have time? Do you want to move on? Make it a group decision. It's not, don't just make it up in your head and think I'll, you need to stop and be honest and yeah. negotiate right on the spot. Mm -hmm. And say, hey, um, you just whatever it is, you just don't throw yourself under the bus, but also don't don't keep promising something you're not going to be able to deliver. Address the situ any address situations as soon as they come up. Mm -hmm. It's very important. That's going to save your relationship and save your job and keep everybody like clear on what's happening and what needs to happen next. What can we cut? What are your priorities? I can't do all this. We need to, we need to figure this out. What do you think? Right. Does um, that make sense? Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I think just also backing up to the, um, to the, uh, the, the bidding part of it is, um, is that first of all, what you said, like communication, absolutely key. As I said, there's the, the, cheat sheet that I created that has those questions. So if anybody watching wants to grab that, it does have like a, 
a cheat sheet of questions that will walk you through what to ask to build your estimate out. Um, because those right. questions, as you said, are so key. Um, and then also um, what you were talking about with um, like the communication part of it. And then um, when like I've heard of of people when you estimate, say you're bidding against other photographers as well. Yes. It doesn't necessarily go to the lowest bidder. Correct. Yeah, it's, no. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that. Like when it's not about the lowest number, if you can't produce on that number, then it's not, they're not going to, they don't, they'll know from looking at it that you won't actually be able to fulfill. Yeah. So yeah, agree? that doesn't always go to lowest number it goes yeah. to, I, I mean, to be honest, I believe it goes to the people who can execute. Um, not every time, because sometimes you'll have a situation on the other side with the agency, the art director, or the client where they just, <laughs> they just don't go there, <laughs> but they will lose and it's not your problem. Your, mm -hmm. your responsibility is to make sure that you can execute the job with the numbers that you have and yeah. that keeping in your own integrity in that way. And when I, when I say in integrity, I'm talking about, you've thought about it, your production value is not over the top. It's not in the gutter. It's, it's doable. It's like, you're all visual people. I visualize, I put myself in the shoot that day and I stand there and I look around hmm. and I think about the day and I think about what time of year is it? Where am I standing? When is the, when is the sun going to come up? When is it going to come down? How early can I get into this location? How many stairs do I have to deal with? Are there, how many bodies will I need to actually get this done? Am I down in a basement? Like I think about the shoots, <laughs> this place makes me laugh, but it's awesome. But think about the shoots that I've had in the LA Times building downtown. I'm like, mm, okay, yeah, absolutely. That's a bitch. So, um, you know, you just add the bodies instead of add the bodies on the day. How mm -hmm. do I, how do I execute this particular job? Mm -hmm. How much time do I actually have? I need an hour for lunch, whether you take it or not, because that's your slush time. Mm -hmm. You need to go to 30 minutes. You can. Um, you t think about the time it takes to get people fed or to have food out in the morning, hair and makeup. You know, you always at the very least you are at the very least you have an hour to mm -hmm. hour and a half on the front end hour in the middle, hour wrap on the back end, especially if you're doing a ton of content and your digi needs to digi time on your location. Mm -hmm. So that normally, you know, in the winter that leaves you, you know, realistically in the winter in Los Angeles, that leaves you about six hours or uh, five, five to six really full hours of shooting if you're doing any daylight stuff, you know? Yeah. So um, try to visualize your situation as best you can and be realistic. Yeah. Now that totally comes with experience. And if you haven't done any commercial shoots, um, get on one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point. Get on one being you know, in a, in <laughs> an other, in another call, right? Yeah, totally. Okay. Just get your butt on one. Get be assisting production assisting or photo assisting is a great way to do that. Yeah. yeah, and it'll just give you a ton of inside information. You can tap, you can just see how the working goes and how client interaction goes, and like, yeah, how yeah. labor intensive all that can be, and how much streamlining and like a good producer can just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's unfortunate and fortunate that we can get a ton of content in if we can, <laughs> if we organize it well. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. um, um, there are questions coming in. Do yeah, you, I'm, yeah okay. I'll, um, I'll back up to some of these questions. So um, Alexa um, says, love that advice about line itemization. Megan um, says, is it a good idea to give a client a few options when putting together an estimate? Example, a lower cost option for some of, um, some of the production costs versus a higher cost option or do you just keep a different option in your back pocket in case they come back and say the estimate is too high or isn't worth what they're looking for? Um, if they don't ask for options, the only options you want to give are ones they've asked for, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion. Um, and I think, like, this is also, I think this is also a good time to talk about the difference between the estimate and then negotiation because um, the estimate isn't the, the final. Like, 
you right. go back and you negotiate and that can be when you find out they find out <laughs> what they really what want it takes. yes what they want and how to execute that so i would say you always deliver the estimate that is the most well-rounded um depending on your client um who they are um who the agency is what they have asked for because there are and also when you're <laughs> they're, they're just you have to be intuitive about it to know what they're really asking you and if they start asking you for you know um if, you, if they start asking you for things like um car service or things like that you know you want your production value to be at a certain space okay mm -hmm. so just take certain cues based on their needs. Mm -hmm. And then um, otherwise most productions these days come in in a just really nice, tight, workable, comfortable package. Mm -hmm. um, so work on that, line item everything out so that you can see for yourself, add mm -hmm. everything up. And so they can see, especially if they're, especially as like, as we started this conversation, a client who might not already have all their answers, you know, right. up to where they're going and what they're doing. So line item uh, a lot of things out so that um, you, they can see the scope and you can see the scope. And so when, because the thing about inexperienced clients or creatives is that, um, they don't know what all these things are for mm -hmm. and they don't know why you need to have them. And then you'll have it there when you start getting quizzed to explain everything. And then you go from there when they're like, well, how can we lower the numbers on these? And the answer is always in production value, mm -hmm. the amount of bodies on set, how many talent, you know, and then we'd go with content. Mm -hmm. um, how much content are they getting? How many people are, are we shooting, you know, are there dogs? You know, dogs are freaking expensive when you need trained dogs, stuff like that, you know, just, and then it, it comes down to, um, when I say production value, this could also include, um, you know, are you building sets? You know, what's the scale? You know, what can we scale back and still get good imagery? Mm -hmm. How many props do we need? You know, you know, and also too, like, to be honest, a wide scale shot could be way more expensive than a close up. Mm -hmm. Depends on what else we're doing that day, you know, what else we're paying for, you mm -hmm. know, so how the creative, the creative itself can actually be a negotiable. Mm -hmm. And you, and that is absolutely fair game to throw out there and start to rework because people's ideas, yeah, people's ideas of what they want can sometimes be like crazy expensive and they might may not know why or how or why that is. And you'd be like, well, if you cut out this weird little item that's sitting in the background there or this particular angle in something or, you know, it, you know, it could be anything you'll find out by when you start um, gathering your numbers and getting the actual costs of everything written down. Do not assume you know. You need to stop and you need to write it down. Don't ever throw out numbers. Mm. Always back off, get off the phone and call them back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because we all need our time to ingest what was just shown to us yeah. or that we just talked about. Yeah. So we uh, um, always, always step back. Always step back yeah. and write it out. That's Put it such, down in numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Taking that, you definitely, definitely never say anything on the first call. Like, can you give me a ballpark on nope. what this would cost? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll get back to you. Absolutely. I'd be happy to get yeah. back to you with a, some general stuff. And then I would probably, if that's the case, you might still need to keep asking them questions. Yeah. <laughs> the conversation. To get a more detailed ballpark. <laughs> Yeah, because exactly. ballparks aren't ballparks aren't estimates. Yeah, no. And that is, a ballpark doesn't like it. It isn't just a matter of what your day rate is or what the usage is. It's just so much more complicated. And I think 
like that is the other part is that this estimate is a living breathing thing it's not um it's not a it, like i know i have a template in the group and that's a starting point but it is not one size fits all especially with commercial photography um and and i think that that um you know when people can at, like look at it as this is the beginning and then when they negotiate that's more of a conversation because they might look at it like you said they might look at the estimate and say oh wait a minute what if we didn't get models okay well that would cut out your um talent fee your casting your all of this and then all of a sudden the production cuts is cut out in half. wardrobe it cuts yeah. out wardrobe costs it cuts out wardrobe assistance it cuts out a, it cuts out it cuts it potentially it cuts out cuts down on your, well, it cuts down on your full footprint. It cuts down on a potentially your location cost and your permit fees, yeah. depending yeah. on how big or small, right? So in yeah. LA, your permits are, I, I, haven't, I haven't done a stills permit in like an age because it's yeah. anything over 15 people. It's like, hi. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that that's like a, um, that's a really good, like, you know, we, it, it's a living, breathing thing, and we've got to um, like look at it as that. And yeah, yes. I, I I really okay. Um, boop, 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 let me see. Um, let's also talk about um, because of uh, we've kind of touched on it, and I think you really, really hit it home when you were talking about you know when you at, are working on a job, um, you put yourself into that space. So that to yeah. me says like that's a conscious way of estimating. So what other ways do you think are ways that photographers can be conscious about how they come up with numbers and estimate on jobs? I mean, that's it because, you know, it's maybe easier for women than men, but I don't want to be sexist. Um, like, you can feel the job when you're standing in the vision of it, right? And you're walking around in it. Um, and like, how does it, how does it feel? It's, you just need to stop and look at all the details mm -hmm. and you need to start. And it's really about slowing it down and writing it out and mm -hmm. taking out, taking yourself out of the idea of money. These are numbers. This yeah. is not your personal, this is, so this is not your personal anything. Yeah. This is something that you need to get paid for uh, or you need to get money so that you can pay for it or have a producer pay for it. So these numbers, I've had a lot of situations when I've talked to people where they're just their personal ideas about money get in the way, mm. whether they're inflated or deflated. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, more, most of us are, on the deflated mm -hmm. zone because we don't realize how much things cost all the time. And when you start, it's like you literally have to start adding up the days for every role. Mm -hmm. And, but you have to go, okay, I'm now, you know, first assistant. Okay. Uh, location shoot three days, three day location shoot. You know, are, do we have a, you know, are we doing a company move in the middle of the day? How many locations are we going to, right? So all this, you know, and then do we need a tech scout? Do they need to be on that? Are we prepping? Where am I getting my gear from? Am mm -hmm. I doing a pre, a preloaded van that they're mm -hmm. going to drive? Well, you know, they're going to have to do some prep time. We're going to have to talk about gear. You know, they definitely need a prep day. They probably need a wrap day. If you, you might need them for more or a tech scout, mm -hmm. um, depending on their relationship to you, what is that? Plus all the shoot days. Then you want to think about OT, you know, and then how many bodies are they going to need to help you, mm -hmm. you know? And then, so, and then you think about wardrobe. Okay. Are we dressing one person? Is it an adult? Is it a kid? Um, are there any kids involved? Uh, what's our timeline? How many outfits are we doing? And, uh, you know, is it one pe person or is it 20 people during a day? Mm -hmm. So then, hey, first of all, you need to give your wardrobe such. You, there are ways when you're more good at this, you just do it without talking to anybody like the wardrobes, you know, props. I normally call them for costs 
and we discuss the days really quickly. It's not, not a big deal. But um, uh, like with wardrobe and stuff, there's some general costs that you can get really used to. But, um, you know, really how many bodies they need, you know, do, are you doing a fitting? You need to just mm-hmm. you need to step in those shoes and add those days up, you know, right. and how many different outfits and how many different looks. And plus, you always need, obviously, options. We all know this. So it's like, what does that shop actually look like? So talk to your wardrobe stylist, but also have an idea. It's always good to have walked through it yourself because you don't want somebody who is hasn't thought about your job or doesn't have as much information that you maybe haven't communicated to them completely enough mm-hmm. so that you so that they're giving you a good idea of the of what they need. You need to be really clear with all of your crew. And every time you're calling crew, that's a negotiation as well, because you're like, well, I see the job like this. Can you do it like this? How about if we do it in this case? Because I think that's too many. Mm-hmm. You need to know the scope of your job as well and ask them and be very clear with them because a you don't want. I hate when people feel disgruntled because they don't have all the information um, or that it's bigger than they thought or, or whatever it is. So that's, you know, that's always first on my mind is to like get your team as much information as you can, because they're your team. How do you play as a team? If you're not all kicking the ball back and forth and they don't have what they need, you have to like, pull them in and ask their opinion sometimes, and then sometimes tell them, no, can you do it for this? You need to know what your top dollar is and you need to know what you want to get from out of them. Out and of then if they the need, client? no, sorry, crew members. Like if you're talking yeah. to wardrobe or whatever and say, yeah. can you do it in this amount of days for this fee? Right. I don't think we can get that. Are you willing? Is this something you can do? What do you think this is, you know, and they might, they need to ask you about the scope of the job. Um, You know, stuff like that. It's it's good to be really clear because, um, you know, those are, those are negotiables too. Cause if they need to set you straight on something Mm -hmm. and your numbers need to go up, Mm -hmm. you need to put them up just to be safe. You know, whether they think I might be able to get it, put them up, put the numbers up. Yeah. Yeah. I think Um, I'm on track. What else are we talking about? (laughs) No, no. And I think this is a good, like when going back to the estimate part of it, when people, when photographer, when photographer or producer, because this really should be the producer. um, If you can't, if it, if the budget allows for it, um, but, but um, that the, dialogue with the crew is crucial in the estimate building estimate building you can't just throw a bunch of numbers in there um, because there are so many factors like if the if the client is saying they want to do you know they only ha- have two days for a stylist well if there's seven crew or seven talent sorry they can't shop for that many talent in that amount of time so they have they, then they will tell you that <laughs> so that you yeah. can go back and put that in the estimate and say, I'm sorry, the stylist doesn't have enough time to do it. Um, right. So um, there is another question in the group that I'm going to, I haven't read it yet. So I'm going to read it right now um, from Alexa. I don't feel like I have commercial clients with consistently large budgets that can afford a ton of production and extra costs. If I quote a high price and they balk, it's hard because I know what, um, what I need to do the job, but I also want the job instead of another photographer who may have quoted lower. Ha ha. Um, and sorry, I didn't mean it that way. I just meant (laughs) ha ha. Um, any advice for finding clients with larger budgets and then also how to not lose a job when the lower budget client, uh, doesn't want to pay with you. Um, doesn't want to pay what you quote. Okay. I think specifically um, when it comes to client not wanting to pay what you quote, Mm -hmm. um, it really depends on the situation of the shoot, right? And also I would say it's very important to know what that job is worth to you. And also to actually maybe sit down if you haven't already sit down and actually find out what you're making. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you actually making on that job that you took that 
you, I d couldn't understand from the question whether you actually did know or didn't know whether somebody was bidding lower than you, like mm. in reality. Um, not that it matters, especially if they're trying to manipulate you with false information. It's just all about what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. But um, find out what you're actually, what your profit is. Because from when you're saying, quote, it makes me feel like it's a one line item deal and you just figure out how to produce it. Um, and you're Which getting people. Exactly. To, yeah. So, you know. Hey, that's doable. And if you can pull that off and you've got great people you who can who are solid and can help you at a lower rate or whatever you've or if you got your little system on, and then if you have a little bobble one time or another time where you're like it cuts into your fees more than that, you know, it's like cost mm -hmm. of doing business. But I'd I'd say it'd be really important to sort of line item out what your profit really is and find out if that's actually worth it for you. And if this client has run its course, how much portfolio work can you do? Because that has its great value. You know, the, your value, what that job's value is to you is personal. Yeah. Right? It's totally personal. But do know this, a client who pays you a certain rate is probably never going to pay you more. Mm -hmm. You just move on. And whether they come back later, it won't be the, the, the it won't be a fluid flow of like, Hey, well, let's just do it for more this time. Unless you have some specific conversation on the set where they're like, I really need to get this done. You're going to say it costs as much. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, okay. Right. But yeah. um, just know that in the million years of freelance, that has been like a, it's an old, <laughs> an old thing. It's an old idea that everybody used to say, well, it's like, oh, we just, I'm doing it to like keep, I can't even remember what the saying was because it's such crap because it has never come to fruition. You're doing yeah. that job to build your experience, build your portfolio, build your confidence and to keep growing. Mm -hmm. But you also should be getting paid if it's a commercial client, but you need to decide that for yourself. You can do the job anyway, but know why you're choosing that. That is such a be under no illusion, but just yeah. find out, you know, sit down with yourself, look at what you need. But seriously, the biggest thing that people have struggled doing and think they're doing it for some reason, but they don't mm -hmm. write it down. Seriously, mm -hmm. if you need to like put it in numbers or Excel, so it adds it up for you. Mm -hmm. Do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Get used to seeing larger numbers and seeing days and seeing what things actually cost because yeah. rounded full numbers. Yeah. As far as like the bottom line of the shoot. I mean, I don't know. It could be anything, right? It just get used to the larger numbers. Don't let them scare you and don't let them confuse you. Yeah. And two things about that. When when people, um, you know, it kind of goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning when we were talking about, you know, it, you're absorbing all of these production costs into your bottom line as a photographer. And then later on when they come back, it's expected that it's going to be the same. And what that what what that does is it it hides the fact that there are all of these other costs, even if you're doing <clears throat> Job as a photographer right like you're going home and you're doing all of the the post-production well you know you might be anyway but that should be a line item and so Absolutely. that they understand that this is a cost um, that goes with it um, I think especially for photographers who are coming from the wedding and portrait world it's a it's a different mindset because the way that you talk about pricing is totally different um, so to understand uh, that telling your client all of these different things that I do, like the post-production, I need to tell the client that I do that and that that has a cost associated with it. Absolutely. Um, um, and then let's talk a minute about when do you know to walk away? Like when as a photographer should you walk away from a job? I, I know what, and I love what you said about it being it's a personal thing. Personal, yeah. 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 It's a personal choice, but you really need to sit down with yourself. And it's always, <clears throat> it's always super important to yeah. know um, 
because sometimes jobs just feel like crap, like mm -hmm. everything about it, the communication, the creative, the, um, the communication, mm -hmm. the execution, the struggles, the time frames. Can they make a decision? You know what yeah. I mean? Red sometimes, flag. Well, and just red flag, but again, it's personal. <laughs> Yeah. Some people aren't affected by that and they're just like, woo, and they just roll through and they're like, ching, ching, I don't care. But right. yeah, that's why it's personal. Yeah. Um, but sometimes your client, you're just like, ugh, please, just I can't stand working for them. I feel like I need to get paid like a bazillion dollars to work for them. That's mm -hmm. a real feeling. Mm -hmm. Assess it put it next to you and go, okay, I could be overreacting right now, but don't diminish it completely because there's something in that because, mm -hmm. you know, do you need to, you can analyze your part of the game. What can you bring to it? How can you grow? You always have to like take everything, especially in business when you're doing your own business as a growing and learning opportunity because becoming good at the business of photography is a whole other gear than being a good photographer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really is. So again, when to know to walk away, do you crunch your numbers? After you see what you're making, after you sit with yourself about this client, after you see the work that you're getting, or after you see your bank account, literally, like all these are concerns. Do you just need to keep this money? Do you need to keep making this trying to make this work and make this the best situation it can be until you can gain other clients and know when it's hindering you from time to um, search for other clients, pitch other clients or whatever, whatever, whatever the case may be, all of those things need to come into play. All of it fits a new picture of your business and your creativity. So yeah. you need to, you need to look at the two separate things in a full scope. Um, and honestly, if, if you're in a situation like that and it's emotional, whatever, you can call me because I have a business now that's just started. Talk it yeah. out .com. So seriously, it's like we can get down to the emotional and the business nitty gritty of it and find out what you need to do for you to make your business run and to keep you happy and keep you creative because your mind, as you mentioned before, Manishi, if you're doing all the business by yourself. Mm -hmm. your creative juices do get sucked and mm -hmm. diminished. Mm -hmm. It's just, you can't help it. It's hard to like be on set and be like, Oh yeah, this is awesome. When you're just like, I'm exhausted. Yeah. Flat out. So yeah. yeah considerations. And, and, and I think also like um, that whole thing of, can you actually do a good job? If, if you, if you're like, if you end up and you're looking at, at what the client wants, and what the budget is, and you've factored in how it makes you feel, but you're also knowing that ultimately you won't be able to do a good job, or you won't be able to carry out what they, what their, you know what their vision is, you've seen their yeah. creative tears, you've seen all of that, and you say, wow, I don't, I just don't think I can do it, like, I, that, and it's going to make you look bad as a photographer when you don't, so that's, right. I think, is a good time to walk away. Um, yeah because it really reflects on them. Uh, and, and I guess I have a question for you with what you just said of like, can I, can I get this done? Um, mm -hmm. If that's the main concern, then that's a negotiation point. That's mm -hmm. negotiable. Yeah. So if you feel that, well, not if you feel, um, you can 100% bring that to the table mm -hmm. first before you walk away. If they have flexibility on that and mm -hmm. if the other things are good enough, I mean, stand your ground. You, you don't make a decision without asking the questions, mm -hmm. right? If there's a negotiable still in play, talk about it, bring yeah. it up. Right. Yeah, especially if they're, unless, in unless you're, you're just like, I hate these people like legit yeah. that happens. <laughs> yeah. That's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it happens, you know, whatever. It's not very PC, but we all go through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, just going to check in with everybody right now. Um, make sure we're going to 
probably wrap up really soon. I have one more question that I want to ask Lynn in a second, but um, make sure you ask your questions below so that we can address those before we finish because there is a bit of a delay. Um, and then um, Lynn, um, so when, when, um, okay, whoa, I'm like losing my questions mid thought now. <laughs> oh, darn it. That's it's, okay. You'll get it. It's been, yeah, it's been a while. It's, the end of the thing and I'm my my brain is going a mile a minute um yeah. okay but it was around it's more of the um it's more about the internal part of it um okay. and oh okay I'm blanking somebody ask a question so that we can move on <laughs> the fact that my brain is gone <laughs> um okay well I would really love to uh, do you have anything else you want to add Lynn I can expound, but I really don't have anything else to add except everything's personal. Yeah. Add it up for yourself. Add up your time. Add up the emotional content. Add up the value of the imagery. Add up the value to your career, whether that means um, whether that means portfolio wise, uh, growth wise, to become a better business person, to challenge yourself, to communicate with your client, mm -hmm. to challenge yourself not to take things personally, to challenge yourself to step up in a situation where in a situation where you didn't think you could. Mm -hmm. um, that could could mean many things, but sit in it for a minute. Take mm -hmm. a breath, depersonalize it, and start writing things down. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's just the biggest thing is just really step away from it and depersonalize everything you do before you move forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, OK, I kind of remembered what I was going to ask you when you um, you talked earlier about um, being comfortable. I loved how you said this. Be Get comfortable with the big numbers. And I think um, that is something that goes into the mindset part of it. Um, Yes. being comfortable with those big numbers and getting into a place into a mindset for yourself where you can really visualize yourself being um at that next level in in photography can you is there anything that you can suggest um for people to kind of get there or to feel a little more comfortable um expose yourself to it yeah it's it's super it's actually super nuts and bolts by yeah. doing what I'm talking about, using the estimate that Monashi gave you, uh, the template and stuff, and really, it, it, again, if you have not been on a commercial shoot, get yourself on one in any way you can and soak up all the details, talk to people, or you know, be a fly on the wall, really. Talking to people doesn't actually work that well on set because you're going to get in the way. But mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it depends on it depends. Observe. Uh, yeah. observe, observe mm -hmm. well. Um, um, it's, it's, it, it really is just exposure and, mm -hmm. and, and doing the work. Um, it, if you're sitting down, taking a minute and really, really detailed estimating mm -hmm. and adding it up and looking at what the number is. And then once you've done that, the joy of that, if you are the photographer doing it yourself, the joy of doing that is that once you've seen all that goes into it, when you're putting together production numbers, you can reassess your fees. Because <laughs> yeah. you might want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think especially once you start talking to a uh, crew and finding out that you're a photographer that's been charging less than, say, a stylist or uh, um, a, a, an assistant, you know, like those are to understand what people's numbers are and where, what the industry kind of is, is at, um, right. it gives you more confidence. And once you see what you're actually, you, what you're actually pulling off, it gives you confidence because you feel like I'm worth this, like this is worth this. So it Absolutely. puts the value when you can see it laid out that way. Absolutely. And if you're, in a, if you're actually in a position, in a position where, um, you didn't know that you were making less than a wardrobe stylist, then you need to get yourself on set. You need to talk to your peers. You need to get involved with maybe a group and you maybe need to call Monashi. <laughs> or Lynn. Um, <laughs> no, you're the numbers and the fees gal. That's you. 
That's you. No, 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 I'm not. I'm portfolio girl. You're the, you're, you're. <laughs> okay, call me, call me. But also, also, also a really good. If for Vancouver people watching, um, uh, um, Lisa Callback is also in the commercial photography roadmap group, and she's a great um, resource in Vancouver. So um, <clears throat> Lynn is in LA, but both of them are international. Um, uh, there are a few questions that I want to address. Um, do you have a few more minutes? Absolutely. And Ellis okay. Al, friend of mine, okay. asked a question. Okay. So um, Alexa, oh, sorry, sorry. pardon? Okay. Alexa asks, um, any advice on finding clients with larger budgets? I'm not sure if it got answered. Yeah, she had asked that earlier, but it, we got on to a few other things. Any advice on finding clients with larger budgets? Um, uh, get yourself out there um, and yeah, your portfolio. And, you just have and being clear on who your your um, who your ideal clients are, I think it's really a, a lot of the time it is up to the photographer to understand um, who they want to be working with um, and find those people instead of the client finding you. Um, well, you did say finding. Sorry, you did say finding, but you know, research and understand who you want to be have as your as your clients. Yeah. Is that? Is yeah. That I mean, it's. <clears throat> and, and clients with larger budgets are really, uh, I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? It, it Yes and no. It's like, it, what are we talking about? Um, if you want to do big ad shoots, you're probably going to need to have a rep before you get in there because all those ad agencies, that's how, that's, that's their funnel. Mm -hmm. And, um, but finding, you could, possibly find that your client has a larger budget if you get better at communicating and and line iteming out what needs to get done showing discrepancies and how you can achieve especially if it's somebody you've shot with before or something you can try to maneuver that and I'm slightly contradicting myself when I said normally with your clients they won't pay you more but you can absolutely use that opportunity to take it as a a, a learning situation to try and get them to understand other production value. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's really just production value. And if they needed more content, how to effectively do that. Mm -hmm. You may need, if you're a younger, younger photographer, meaning younger in the business, uh, you may need to talk to somebody, talk to a producer, get some help on how to approach that, what different things are, you know, but it, it, you know, to be honest, it really depends on the client's need, you know, their where their placement is. Yeah. You know, people's budgets are based on their their advertising dollars or their placement mm -hmm. um, or the value to their business. You know, if you do like, I don't know, I don't want to get I, I don't want to keep. There's so many opportunities to have conversations and to build relationships and to start talking about how to build a building budgets, knowing how to create a shoot in many different ways mm -hmm. and putting things out there. Cause you may realize that this client or that a client or a new client that you're having a conversation with may want to spend more money based on what you're telling them can be done or how things can be done and what you can get in for what money or whatever it is, you know, that's a really, what I'm talking about is actually quite a high level mm -hmm. sort of conversation. And I have to have a lot of confidence to do it. And yeah, this is sometimes a lot of experience, but not always. And you just, if, I don't know, you know, it's tricky, but there's always an opportunity to build a better relationship and to expand something mm -hmm. with someone you need yeah so anyway no that is um such a key thing to point out and um i i've had um so i had last week i had freda scott who is a photo rep um san francisco photo rep on and um there there is that you know you said a few minutes ago um that you know you need an, a rep to get the ad jobs but you also need the ad jobs to get the rep and so um, oh, a, a lot of like, I think um, I, I actually um, I actually think that, you know, in order to get in front of some of those people in the ad world, um, the art buyers and things like that, um, get in there, get in there, um, 
get where they are. They're not necessarily going to hire you right away, but if right. they see you in the space and they start to become familiar with you, it's about relationships. This business is about relationships and it's about cultivating those relationships over time. So it's not going to happen tomorrow or the next day. Maybe it will. Maybe you'll be discovered at a college like portfolio review or something like that. But but it is really about cultivating those relationships over time. So when you say like getting the big jobs, if you put in the time early on and you put yourself in front of those people, go to um, I, the the cheat sheet that I created last week has ideas on how you can, um, you know, put yourself in front of people using social media, using, um, you know, going to art, having your work shown in art galleries, things like that. Um, that's a really good way to um, to make yourself visible to those people early on. Okay. And it's something you do over time. Um, I, there's one more question um, that I'm going to ask you that somebody in the group has asked. And then I really um, am going to need to wrap up. Um, but this has been awesome. I feel like we could talk forever about this. Um, OK, Ellis Ow asks, um, how do you tackle social social media shoots that take the same amount of production but have lesser usage or is lower profile? This is a great question because this is something that a lot of photographers are having to contend with right now. Do you, um, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are um, it all the basic negotiable, the basic negotiables are your fees because the usage is smaller and then um, also your production value. I did a job for Honda Mm -hmm. uh, with a well-known photographer that we ended up doing it in a tiny, crazy, crazy, tiny little studio. Um, we had to do, it was, uh, we ended up doing a lot of gifts. Um, we shot, uh, the actual, you know, the other part of that is the cars were shot separately and we did all the animation and the other stuff. Um, it's all, <clears throat> I think the way to tackle it is uh, ask them straight out what their budget is and uh, creative is the creative approach is always a negotiable, um, not necessarily compromising yourself, but maybe compromising or asking about their budget versus the creative. But um, if it's a higher, uh, if it's a higher level client, like such as Honda or something like that, they're going to have a very strict number that they're not going to budge on and they will find somebody to shoot it. But the good thing about when you're working with a higher end client, especially with social media stuff, um, um, <clears throat> talent and locations and everybody around this area has done it before. Um, mm -hmm. You can, you can get what you need. I'm just going to mm -hmm. say that. So, but you, it's going to be a production value and people have to understand like, lunch is like might be chipotle like seriously like i had to go we had to run for honda and like eat from a cafe take out mm -hmm. and stuff like that you know that's just it and the people you're working with they they get it they will get it but it it's it's all in that um and ask them straight out what their budget is sorry would you say the expectations are also lower production value like yeah, what sorry that's what expect? i was okay Sorry, that's what I was saying. And if it's a social okay. media shoot, what my experience when I've had to do social media shoots, it's um, if it's a client like that, the only people showing up are agency folks and you, you, you spell it out to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. This is where it's going to be. We're going to do it like this. No, uh, usage fees. It really depends on who the client is and whatever, mm -hmm. but yeah, usage is less. So you've got to, it's not an unlimited, uh, I don't want to say unlimited at all. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah. I, what I meant to say is it's a bad word to use in front of photographers, but I, what I mean is like unlimited print, excluding broadcast mm -hmm. and, and including, um, uh, new media. So that's mm -hmm. everything. It doesn't necessarily include OOH, meaning out of home, billboards, things like that. That should always sort of stay out. So that's a really high level thing. And also, um, sometimes that's, you know, I don't know, I'm thinking about uh, file deliveries and things like that right now. So um, time period for usage. Do, is there like generally oh, usage time? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I would imagine that you can shorten people wouldn't use social media stuff for very long, right? It could probably be a year or two max because they're not fresh contents. The whole, yeah, the whole game. Right. But I mean, and, would they be required to that? That's been my question is, are they then required to remove it after the, the period is up? 
Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh you mean take it down off of something out yeah. of the feed? Like say it's an Instagram post or whatever. It's part of their Instagram. That's a good thing. Um, cause I have seen it done that way where there's like, you know, a year of usage Absolutely. and then it gets tracked and they have to actually remove it. Um, it's that just a lot sense. of tracking. Absolutely. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know who's looking at in a feed like a year or two later and how relevant that is, but I get you cause it'll yeah. still come up in a search and all that. Yeah. Um, I actually don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it's one of those things where it's a bit of a gray area. <laughs> well, we're figuring it out. It's still new for us. So yeah. um, I'd say yeah. just keep in contact with each other about it. Cause yeah, I don't literally know. And yeah. um, whatever you can negotiate, do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and everybody has a different way. It's not, it is like, you know, some people will wrap that in and some people won't. And it is just dependent, the living, breathing estimate. Um, yeah. Okay. I am going to have to wrap this up because I have to go pick my kids up from school shortly. Um, but um, Lynn, it has been so good having you. And um, I really appreciate the time that you've taken to be here today. I'm, I just put up your um, Talk It Out LA um, link again. So um, for those of you who um, are interested in learning more about what Lynn and um, working with her as a coach, um, I, really quick question, do you, um, with your coaching side of things, is, is estimating and the production side of things, is that something that you incorporate into that as well or is it more um, the emotional aspect of things? It's more of the bigger picture. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of estimating. I don't want to help you with an estimate. If you, mm -hmm. you can call me as a producer right? in that case, I'm happy to help. But I, you know, at the same time, you know, I, I do both things. So I will let you know where that where falls, falls into. Yeah. But if you're having trouble with a client or you don't know where to go and there's a, there's a personal thing and, or if you're just like, I've been estimating all these things. I'm doing it wrong or I don't know what to do. You can call yeah. me on Talk It Out LA. Absolutely. And if you have a question, just call me on Talk It Out LA. I will let you know. Yeah. I will let you know where it falls into. I'm a very helpful person. I, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. I, <laughs> and uh, I can most likely help you or give you a reference or whatever you need. I'm not a scary person. I'm not a big weirdo. I am here. I'm here for people. Call me up, send me a text. If you're in trouble, if you have a conundrum, do it. I'll send you the right place or I'll set up a time for us to talk. Yeah. Very cool. Um, okay. I, I'll just put that up again. I had your, your producing link up for a second. Okay. Thank you again so much. This has been awesome. If you're catching the replay, go back to the beginning and watch it all from the beginning. Um, and then um, also make sure you grabbed the, um, the cheat sheet that has all the questions that I included um, for when you're trying to build out an estimate. It's helpful to understand what you need to ask your clients to do that. So um, you can grab that in this post. And Lynn, thank you so much. Thank you. And it was so fun. Yeah. See you guys all soon. Okay. Bye.